Thanks, mate. Hello, Bulla, Salam, and g'day. Michael Gallus here on A1 TV. Magic Monday. Don't you love Mondays? And I tell you, we've got a crack of a guest with us today and coming to us all the way from Fiji. You can see I've got my Ovalau rugby jersey on for the mighty Fijians and the mighty uh, Ovalauians who came to the mainland right near where our guest is staying at the moment and just got beaten in the quarterfinals. So a big cheerio and a big shout out to everyone on Overlow, especially the rugby team. And our special guest, those of you who live in Melbourne, those of you who for Collingwood, I don't have to introduce him, that's for sure. Joffa, the Collingwood um, cheer squad. He's AFL Collingwood royalty, I can uh, describe him. Out. He's an author, he's a motivational speaker, and he's just an amazing man in relation to the community and the volunteering he's done. And he's coming to us all the way from Fiji. Joffa, welcome to A1 TV. Willa Vernaka, good to be here, Mick. It's great to have you, Joff. It's great to um, have you, mate. Cur currently in Nandi. Uh, Nandi is spelled N-A-D-I, but there's a hidden N in Nadi, and it's actually called Nandi. So that's where I am now. And uh, next week I go back to the village for four weeks, and. Uh, uh, I'm undecided whether or not to go back home to Brisbane, Brisbane is my home now, or go to England for four months. Now you talk about the village, we've got a huge Fijian audience, which village are you going back to? Oh mate, the Moi Voi Voi, it's in Bua, it's in northern Fiji. Um, this place is, uh, is pretty remote, it's um, Far northern Fiji, Vanua level, that's the other island. At the moment, I'm on Viti level. Um, it's two hours from the nearest um, precinct, if you'd like to call it that. It's two hours from Lombasa. So the Fijians listening to this would know what I'm saying. Um, so it's, it's pretty remote. It's uh, probably 70 houses in the village. And the Moi Voi Voi is the name of it. Uh, wonderful, wonderful people in the village. It's a good lifestyle. It's a uh, few eye openers. It's um, I don't I don't think many white people could live in a village for for eight months on the basis that it's um, it's tough. Um, and to try and um, put that in in a way where your listeners here will understand what I'm saying. Take Australian life back a hundred years ago, and that's the way they're living in the village now. And how'd you get there, Joff? Last time I saw you at the MCG, wearing a gold jacket, waving a game over flag, giving it to all us Carlton supporters. Now here you are in a remote village in far north Fiji. How did you end up there? Well, I uh, look. It's um, look. It's a, it's a long story, but because of uh, some um, family associates, the, the village. Um, it's their village, uh, it belongs to them. There's a house in the village um, and that house has become a part of my house. So the opportunity was to get away, Mick. I was very, very overweight. I was 124 kilos. I'm now down to 89 kilos. Jeepers. Jeepers. Say yeah. that again, buddy. 124 kilos last year and now I'm 89 kilos. Fantastic. How, how has that happened? Well, simple. Uh, lots of walking up these Fijian mountains and only one meal a day. Uh, it's either a soup or a, um, a salad of the night time. About seven o'clock every night I, ha I have one meal. Yeah. And I've been, do I've been doing that for eight months. And uh, over that period of time, I've shed 33 kilos. And I must say, uh, thankfully, I've never felt better. <laughs> sometimes some, sometimes late at night I might get up and have a couple of uh, breakfast cereal crackers. You would know them, Mick. Yeah. Um, uh, just, just to fill the stomach up. But uh, no, look, I've, I've never felt better. Um, I'm on a course of vitamins. Um, uh, yeah, but to, to lose that much weight, uh, like I was physically unwell in Melbourne. I worked night shift for 20 years for the Salvation Army. Yeah. I was probably med mentally not probably uh, in tune because I was always tired and that. Yeah. So busy, Mick. I mean, I was just all over the place. Yeah. yeah. So I was sitting down one day and I thought, well, I think I've got to change things around a bit, you know. So I decided to uh, 
They come to Fiji for four months, Michael. Yes, Sammy. Uh, but the lockout. Huh? And I get here two weeks and the world locks down and I'm still here in eight months. That wasn't a part of the plan. Yeah, well, uh, Job, we're in eight months of lockdown here in Melbourne, so I know you're locked down there, <laughs> but, uh, mate, I'd rather be in Fiji at the moment, that's for sure, buddy. But um, it's so, so good we, to hear from you. Yeah, look, we've been lucky in Fiji. We had a, um, in the early days of the COVID-19, we had a couple of cases, but we haven't had an active case in 154 days. Yeah, fantastic. We still have the curfew, and we know the reasons why we've got the curfew, because so many people here are doing it tough. Yeah. Uh, they're scared, they're, they're scared to, um, uh, yeah, release the curfew because there'd, there'd be so much crime. I mean, people yeah. here in Fiji are struggling so much. Um, yeah, yeah they'll, they'll keep the curfew on here as long as I can because of that. Yeah. And you talk about um, Fiji and struggling with earthly possessions compared to us uh, Westerners, but they're so rich in spirit and so happy, Joffa. Have yeah. you seen that wherever you've been? Oh, oh, especially in the villages and a lot of houses in the city. Um, there's no earthly possessions in the village. I mean, uh, there, is, there are some places in the village, it's just a tin shed, a mat on the floor, an outside kitchen. Um, yeah, wood fire, and, isn't it, Joff? Wood fire? Yeah. And we don't have wardrobes in the village. We have suitcases. Every all the clothes are packed into suitcases because no one can afford wardrobes. Yeah, and they don't um, need them, Joff, do they? No. Look, uh, there's a lot of things we don't need. Um, a lot of the older uh, uh, places in the village still have the outside toilet and outside yep. shower. Yeah. Hey, um, how's the hot water going, Joff? Any hot water? <laughs> Keep it friendly. I haven't seen hot water in eight months. <laughs> I know, mate. When I, lived, when I lived in the village, I tell you, it was a great way to start the day because, boom, you got hit by the cold water, you're up and about. Oh. oh, mate, on a warm day when you've been up and down the hills and you've done some gardening and whatever you're doing and you come in and have a hot shower, uh, it's beautiful because um, Fiji right now is the dry season, which is really good. It's hot sun and cool winds. But when the wet season gets here in December, the humidity and the mugginess, yeah. it is draining. And when it rains outside, everyone runs outside with a bar of soap and has a rain bath. <laughs> you know? How uh, fantastic is look, that job? Yeah, look, it's a, look, it's a different world. It's, um, it's a third world country. And I want to stress to you, Mick, that it's not the five-star hotel country that some people back home think it is. Yeah, you're right. This is a land, this is a land of immense poverty. The government's a little bit sus. Uh, the infrastructure, the roads in Suva <laughs> is an How absolute... Those potholes? How are those potholes on the bus oh. stop? <laughs> oh. There's no health system here. I mean, if I was to get sick here, I'd be on the first plane back home. Yeah. Uh, the health system here is actually very scary. Yeah. Um, but like you said, uh, people are happy. I mean, you walk yeah. past everyone here and you say Buller, and they say Buller back with a smile. Now, in Australia, somebody could walk up and say, mate, do you know me? Why are you speaking to me? <laughs> yeah. See, yeah. There's, a difference, there's a difference in people. I mean, they're so friendly. and Yeah. Um, and they yeah, look, I've, been, I've been spent on. They give you the you, their shirt off their back, wouldn't they, Joff? The Fijians, unbelievable generosity. Mick, you'd walk into a house in the village, and if you said you were hungry, they would give you that last bowl of rice. Yeah, yeah. This is how kind these people are. Yeah. Uh, look, I've been all around Nandi. I've been all around Siva. I've been. I've caught the ferry from. Uh, the newer level over to uh, Viti level here. Overlaw, have you been to Overlaw yet, Joff? Overlaw? No, 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 no. Um, um, that's on the list, mate. Go to the village of Vuma. I'm from Vuma yeah. in Overlaw. They'll look after you. You get treated like a king, Joff, a king. <laughs> well, that'd be nice. Look, it's a wonderful country. Um, uh, I want to tell you a story. Um, 
I walk to Nandy from here. I do about 12, 15 kilometers walk every day. One morning I was walking past a coconut cellar on the side of the road heading into Nandy. And he showed me a um, immense kindness. He, he nodded his head and said, would you like a coconut? Now, these coconut sellers are hard working boys. You've got to get the coconuts to the stand. They skin the coconut. They've got to they cut the ends off and put a straw in. It's not easy. And he gave me a coconut. And I was so touched. I was walking into Nandy and on the way back, I, I thought, I've, I've got to repay this, this nice young man for doing that. So I gave him a $50 note. And as you know, Mick, $50 here in Fiji oh, is yeah. a lot of money. <laughs> yes. yeah. he, he was in tears. Yeah, yeah. He just couldn't believe it. Um, they are very, very, very kind, generous, warm people. And I'm a big hip of the kids over here. The kids are just sensational. Um, but the country is ruined by the pandemic, Mick. Nandy Town is a ghost town. Yeah. Um, and, of course, the people that had jobs in tourism, which was thousands and thousands of people yeah. in Nandy, they've had to abandon their house. They've yeah. had to go back to their respective villages over on this island or the other island, island just to survive. Yeah. And let me tell you, Mick, village life is hard. Yeah. Physically. Uh, and mentally, it's very hard. After four weeks in the village, I've got to get out. Yeah, I'm lucky. I'm lucky. I know people in Nandy and Siva where I can come for a week or two and go yeah. back to the village. But after four weeks, some of the, some of the stuff you see is just, uh, yeah, you know, it's very sad. Yeah. But um, you know, people in Australia, the, the, we've spoken about the Fijians. Let me talk about the Australians for a minute. In the height of the pandemic. Australian people were sending money to me yeah. in Fiji to buy rice and flour for the people in the village. Now, this was at a time in Australia in the pandemic when people were losing their jobs. Uh, uh, there was a lot of uh, anxiety and doubts about what was coming up in the future. But the mighty Aussie still gives. You know, I, 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 I really believe the Australian is the most generous person in the world. Yeah. And um, I think at the end of the rice and flour campaign, Mick, I think we've got something like that must have been pretty close to a hundred bags uh, <laughs> of each. And, and when you deliver this stuff to the houses in the village, they are crying. Yeah. Yeah. You know, for a bowl of rice and a bowl of uh, um, flour, they're in tears. Yeah. You know? Um, look, it's, it's a different it's life. Extraordinary, Joffa. And, and, all credit to yourself as well. I mean, that's another part we'll touch on. You've spent your whole life helping other people and being there for other people and for you to be in this village, but then to reach out to us all back here in Australia via Facebook and to have your support network send money so you could get flour and rice to take back to the village and to yeah. support the village. It's uh, all credit to you, Joffa. You're a great man. People think uh, you're crazy. People think you're just a crazy Collingwood supporter, Joff. But um, yeah. and so did I before I actually knew you. And uh, yeah. now, you know, you're one of my inspirations because wherever you go, you do things for other people, and it's usually a great cost to great cost to yourself too, Joffer. And it's a it's a real credit to you, mate, that um, what you do and the way you harness your generous yeah. spirit yeah. with your friends that you continue to yeah. support people. You're in some remote village in far north Fiji, and yet you're still helping people to survive and giving them hope. And it's so important, Joff, isn't it, to give people hope in the world? Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, just to let people know that uh, somebody is thinking about them. I think yeah. that's very important. I think there's a, uh, there's a lot of loneliness in the world, and... Um, and I think loneliness brings on all sorts of mental health issues. And I think every now and then, if you think, oh, gee, you know, someone is thinking of me, they can be very, very uplifting. Yeah. When you walk down the street and smile at someone. Yeah. Yeah. That is uplifting to people because that person would go home and think that nice person smiled at me today and, and I didn't even know him. So yeah. little things like that are acts of kindness. So if you can't afford to give, and a lot of people can't, and we know that, just smiling and greeting someone, saying hello to someone at the checkout at the supermarket, you know, when you, 
waiting for your groceries to go through. Yeah, there are a million acts of kindness. Um, but um, without being repetitive, um, you know, what people did back in Australia, you know, to the village was just, uh, it was very touching. And let me tell you, uh, it's a lot of work. Yeah. Getting this rice and flour. <laughs> wheelbarrow, on the wheelbarrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, sadly, they got wheelbarrow boys outside supermarkets in Fiji, yeah. and that's their job. Yeah. You give them a dollar or two dollars, they take the wheelbarrow to the car or the bus. Um, and um, they, um, one tip over. Uh, well, the bus was coming through, so we so we lost that uh, donation of flour and rice. So, and I was a little bit peeved because I had to buy the flour and rice out of my out of my money. But that's what you, you got to do. I mean, it was yeah. you know five six bags. Mick, wait here. Just let me get my charger. My phone's telling me the battery's going flat. Hang on. Righto, Joff. No dramas. This is Michael Gallus on A One TV, Healthy Living. And we're going live, well, going live uh, at this point in time on Magic Monday to Fiji to talk to the great Joffa, Collingwood cheer squad uh, yeah. leader, AFL Collingwood royalty, author, motivational speaker, community volunteer who's currently residing in Fiji. And he's just given us a uh, brief outlook in relation to his life at the moment. And a big shout out to everyone who's watching across Fiji and uh, around the world in Pakistan and India. A1 TV, Joff, goes to millions and millions of people across the world. So uh, just make sure there's no oh, swearing we'll... from you. No swearing, Joffa. No swearing. No. No, to all those people around the world that are doing it tough, you're not doing it alone. We're all thinking of you. Uh, and we will get better. This, this thing will pass by and we'll get it on top of it. So just... I, I believe that we'll get on top of this one day and it's uh, not going to be here forever. Um, lives might change, our life might change a little bit, but we'll get on top of it. You're right, Geoff, you're Thank right. You. It'll pass. It's uh, it's pretty tough. I mean, as you know, I think we're, Melbourne's had the longest lockdown in the world and mentally very tough for us Melburnians <laughs> at the moment. Even though we're nearly there, and as you know in life, the last hurdle is always the hardest to get over, isn't it? Oh, of course it is. Look, I, I keep in track uh, with what's happening in Melbourne on my... I've got a radio app on my mobile phone. So I keep in track daily what's going on there. And it's just horrific. I mean, you know, thousands of people have lost their jobs. Um, you know, people are getting rent assistance. It's scary now, but I'm more scared for people in six months' time when we yeah. slowly get on top of this thing yeah. and people are still there suffering. Yeah. I, I think that's going to be the killer. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be tough. And you, you mentioned you're keeping track of what's happening in Melbourne and Australia. You've uh, obviously kept track of the uh, the Mighty Pies. Have you been able to watch them at all? Yeah, um, well, if I'm in the village, I've got to go to the top of the mountain, which is good for me because it's a long hike. Yeah. Uh, it takes me about an hour to get there because in the village there's no reception. So we've got to find a high point. This high point has been there probably since the internet was invented because they're pretty smart in finding these places. Yeah. So we, we trek up this great big mountain and uh, it's good for you. And when we get up there, we've got this wonderful view of, of Fiji and we get reception there. So... Uh, that's only in the village. When I'm back in Nandi and Suva and the Sori and yeah, you know, uh, places, uh, you know, big places on the mainland, um, I watch it on my mobile phone. So I'll be watching it tonight. Oh, Joff has just dropped out there. Well, uh, hopefully he's uh, he's in a um, um, difficult area for uh, internet. So fingers crossed he'll. Uh, He'll try and get himself back on line, and it's uh, it's been very important to talk to Joffa and giving us a giving us a perspective of uh, of Fiji and how they're coping with the COVID crisis, and also life living in a village. I was very lucky through Wonga Baravilla and Jade Baravilla and Island Breeze Rugby Plus to uh, spend time in a Fiji village, uh, working with Footies Raw when I was volunteering. In uh, we went to uh, Vuma. Only in Boomer, as they say, and also the uh, village of Ruku Ruku, 
up in the north of Overlau. Um, both of them have been on um, Overlau and uh, Ireland, and you can see my jersey here and the mighty Overlauans had uh, made it to the quarterfinals on the mainland uh, just two days ago. And a big shout out to everyone who represented Overlau and the rugby team. Um, that was just totally outstanding that uh, the way you presented and the way you had a crack. And unfortunately, you didn't uh, win the game, but you certainly won the hearts and the, uh, the minds of everyone that watched you play. The way you represented your uh, island and yourselves and your family was just an absolute joy to um, all of us that were able to all overlowings that were there as your supporters and people watching across uh, the world through uh, Facebook Live. Uh, great credit to yourselves. And as you know in life, the greater the uh, effort, the greater the reward. So um, go back, pat yourselves on the back in relation to what you did well and um, have a look with your coaches, with each other's ways that you can improve so that you can get across the line next year. Start training now if you want to win it. If you want to win it, you've got to start training now, everyone from Overlau, uh, rugby team, and work harder than you did last year. That's the other thing. You've got to work harder. There's no way you can get better at something unless you're not working harder. So a big shout out to everyone there. And I was so proud, so proud to see you uh, go on the ferry across to the mainland from Overlau and to represent our tiny island with such great uh, pride, such great respect and such great humility. And um, I cannot wait. I cannot wait for next year because I know you will go just as well, if not better, because you're going to train harder, you're going to listen to your coaches, you're going to work harder, and you're going to play as a team. And that's what got you there in the first place, playing as a team. Joff has unfortunately dropped out in Fiji and um, uh, due to internet and technical difficulties. So um, we'll try and see if we can get a hold of him at a later date. Michael Gallus on A1 TV, thanks you for uh, joining us. Mate, I've had amazing support. I've had amazing guests. And really the support that's been coming through Facebook Live since my first interview on A1 TV, Healthy Living, Magic Monday, has been extraordinary. It really has been extraordinary. And uh, really thank people who are watching through A1 TV relays across the world into Pakistan, India, Canada, America, New Zealand, the UAE, Thailand, um, and anywhere else, people across Australia who are tu tuning in, Melbourne. Um, just want to say a big thank you from the bottom of my heart. A big thank you for supporting everything I've done. Big thank you to the A1 TV team, uh, um, Sana and Samir, who give me such great support and give me such great help and advice. I've really enjoyed being on A1 TV. I hope you're enjoying it because we've got cracking people to come. And um, I really thank you for allowing me to come into your uh, lounge rooms, come onto your phones or your iPad or your computer screen every Monday night. And it's, it's highly enjoyable. It's a lot of fun. And um, it really has been uh, an eye-opener for me to uh, talk to uh, our special guests each Monday night and to gain an opportunity to hear from them and the ways that most, the ways that they've overcome adversity, which is something we're all doing at the moment with corona in a variety of different ways. And as Joffa just said, it'll pass. It'll um, certainly, we won't have to um, spend our lives worrying about it, hopefully in the near distant future. And uh, we'll look back on this time and take great resilience from it in the way that we all handled the challenge and uh, kept going. So I wish you a, uh, a healthy week. Look after each other. As Joffa says, be kind to each other. Give someone a smile. Ask them if they're okay. Do something to help them out. Mow their lawn. Cook them a cake. Just even, just give someone a smile and say hello. How are you going? It's been a pleasure having you on A1 TV. I'll make sure I check in with Joffa again and we'll get him back on the show. What an amazing man. One of my inspirations in relation to, we didn't even get to his community work in Melbourne, but you heard what he's doing for the communities of Fiji in those remote villages, harnessing his support network back in Melbourne. Thank you everyone from Melbourne and Australia that's helped Joffa out in Fiji to collect food 
and then distributed. And you heard Joffa say, a simple bowl of rice that was donated from people in Melbourne, Australia and around Australia, and a simple bowl of flour he was able to give to the villagers, it made them cry. It touched their hearts so much, it made them cry because it's so tough in some of those villages for them to uh, gain food on a regular basis and for someone to think about them from the other side of the world in Melbourne and across Australia makes a great deal and changes lives. And that's something that Joffa does wherever he has been, whether it was with the Collingwood Footy Club, the Salvation Army, or now across Fiji. Joffa, you're a legend. I'm very lucky to call you my friend. You're an inspiration to me and many Australians who really know you, apart from Barrick and from Collingwood, that is, but not everyone can be perfect. It's been a pleasure having you all on A1 TV. Have a great week. I can't wait to see you next week. Michael Gallus signing off with, you know it, Shaba Shaba, Mazzy Karoo and Huru.